let's spend a little bit of time looking at just hi-hats and their relationship with BFD2 from an electronic drummer standpoint. There is a lot of information in chapter 9 of the manual so I encourage you to check that out as well. So I have hi-hat loaded into the proper slot and I'm going to go to the MIDI page. There are two types of hi-hats that electronic drummers will use. Those that actually move up and down like the Roland VH11 and 12 and the DT Extreme 3 hi-hats and those that are permanently closed like Smart Trigger, Visualite has a nice set of them. The ones that are permanently closed actually offer you better performance and more consistency because the moving parts are not connected. For instance, if you have a, a minute, go to YouTube and just type in drummer and watch young drummers or even some serious seasoned people sit down and play. The first thing that happens, they almost always instinctively grab the hi-hat clutch and make an adjustment. It's as common as breathing. If you do that with an electronic drum set, you've just moved the entire bass line for all MIDI information. So even if you have it dialed in spot on perfectly, drummer sits down and moves that hi-hat clutch, he's just screwed the whole thing up. So I encourage you to do one of two things. Either mark the stand with maybe a Sharpie marker, some way to identify exactly where that hi-hat cymbal should be set, or even employ lightweight memory locks to guarantee that it sits in one spot. If you're a studio owner and you want consistent performance without thinking about it, just sit down and play, then your best bet is to use closed hi-hats with a controller pedal, and that goes for any kind of VST drumming or any kind of regular drumming as well. So, let's talk about hi-hats. We're going to come in here, and on this section we have the, the key. So, stepping on the hi-hat has indicated that the note is a G-sharp 3. So, I'm going to grab my hi-hat, drag the photo down to the G-sharp 3, and select pedal. Cool. Simple enough. Now, that's the tip section of the hi-hat. I'm going to bring this down. And in this time, I'm going to select Variable Tip. Now I'm going to the Shank section, and I'm going to select Variable Shank. Those are the only three you need. You need Pedal, Variable Tip, and Variable Shank. BFD2 will do all the rest. This new button here, MIDI Select, this is a really cool function. When you're playing the electronic drum kit and you look over here at the variable slider section, it only lights up when the hi-hat tip is hit. So you come over here and select MIDI select. Now you've frozen it on this page. So now no matter what else you hit, this page is active for you to be able to move all these different sliders on. So let's start by just creating the hi-hat. I like calling this approach bookending the hi-hat. First thing you're going to do, put your foot on the pedal and lift your heel up. That is the closed position. Now not all pedals are going to deliver MIDI controller message 0 to 127. So for that we're going to use these sliders. So the next thing you're going to do is take your heel just gently set it down on the, high, on the heel plate and relax your foot. That should be the point where quarter inch opens up. And all you have to do is starting with the heel up, put your foot down, and then start sliding this bottom slider until it's responding to your heel just moving up and down. Up, down. Now we go to the top. Put your heel on the foot pedal and lift your toes off the pedal board completely. That's your open section. Now gently just put your toes down on the foot pedal board. That should be where the three quarters come into play. So toes on, toes up in the air. And you move the slider till you get a nice transition. You've just bookended the entire hi-hat range. The only thing left to deal with is this area here with the half open. So you have two sliders to set to taste to take you from 
close to quarter on up. Makes it very simple approach. Once you have it set the way you like it, this is a very important thing. I'm using a TD-12 for this demonstration, so I'm going to save my key map as my Roland TD-12. Because no two TD-12s are going to be exactly the same. This is very important um, because people will trade files and say, oh, just use a TD-20 or use a TD-12 note map. They're not all exactly the same. And the hi-hats is the one crucial area that you want to make sure you have. So if you are tracking drum parts for your buddy who lives in another country and you're going to send him the BFD-2 files, send him your specific MIDI note map for your TD-12 also and everything will line up perfectly. Now I want to just show you a little secret. This is a cool thing that I do that I want to pass on to everybody. As a drummer plays the closed hi-hat and they hit it harder, what happens is the drummer actually will lean into that hi-hat symbol a little bit to keep the tension, to keep them closed. And because you're pushing them closer together, the pitch goes up. You can do the same thing in VFD2. You come into the all articulations during the right here in the edit articulation type, click on that drop down window, select close tip, velocity to pitch, you're going to slide that up just a little bit, and the pitch goes up as you play harder, without affecting all of the other articulations. So that's going to give you the exact same response as a real hi-hat or any of the electronic drum hi-hats that do the same thing with response to velocity. Good luck.